Hi, my name is Franco Sancho Esper, and we are going to see together practice number seven related to uh, qualitative um, research uh, in marketing. And practice number seven is going to be related to the what we are going to do is a connotative or connotational analysis in, Atl in Atlas DI. Uh, well, uh, we are going to begin this presentation with a quote by Peter Tracker, where he says that the most important thing about communication is to listen to listen what is not said. So we are going to try to analyze things that are outside of the discourse, out, outside of the text. In the previous uh, sessions or in the previous practices or levels of analysis, we are, have analyzed different uh, levels of um, um, discourse analysis. The textual in practice uh, um, for the textual and, uh, level of analysis, in practice five, the conceptual or contextual uh, level of analysis and in practice uh, uh, six, the organizational level. In this case, we are going to work in a different level. In fact, communication has three components. Uh, the most important, as can be seen on the slide, is the visual, that means visual uh, elements and non-verbal language. The, the second most important is the vocal, tone, clarity, speed, and the last one is the verbal. So the, the all the analysis we have done before is important, but it's the, the, the least important in terms, in, terms of, in terms of communication. So uh, the idea is that what we have analyzed up to now is the uh, coming back from the interviews, uh, other feelings, opinions, or affections that the subjects are able to externalize. And this externalization, of the feelings or the opinions and so on is done by the by means of the discourse. What we are going to analyze is uh, non-textual analysis. Basically, we are going to uh, study connotational elements. So, what is connotation? What is the definition of connotation? It's an idea, feeling which uh, which a word invokes from a person in addition to its literal or primary meaning. So it's something that is not set or the way it is set. So connotational reveals logistic codes that are not obvious and are often externalized unconsciously. This is important, bringing particular richness to the analysis. So we are going to uh, analyze elements like body languages, silences, reactions, and other information that could be incorporated in the stat. So the connotation, the connotational element, elements we are going to analyze are going to be complementary to the analysis we have done previously in Atlas TI. Uh, in, in a matter or in a topic like customer experience, uh, connotational elements are especially important. And for example, if we are analyzing focus groups, uh, interactive elements or the interaction between participants become even more important. Here we have an example of the two tools we are being used throughout the semester to gather the information in the, in the interviews and focus group. In any case, where, when we are doing a connotational analysis, we have to uh, pay attention to the movement of the hands, to the uh, face expressions, to the voice, voice tone, and so on. All the things that are uh, beyond the uh, words the, the individuals are used. As I said in the discussion group, also the interactive elements, the interactions between the between the participants, the how one participant look at each other and so on, is also very important. So, uh, to summarize, we have focus previously in the notative with Atlas TI in the denotative level of analysis. We have mainly done a content analysis, and now we are going to jump to connotative analysis. That this, this level is called interpretative. We are going to analyze uh, things like body, body languages, hands, eyes, parasitic, parasitic uh, gestures, body mimicry, all physical reactions. In these physical reactions, we could, we could, we are not going to do it in the subject, but we could include, for example, uh, um, devices like 
neuromarketing devices to measure this kind of an involuntary, um, uh, unconscious and involuntary reactions of the individual regarding some stimulus. So how to link this connotational analysis with previous practices? In practice phase four, uh, we saw the one element that is used in, in, in Atlas TI that are memos that allows us to write uh, next to ideas, things that could be important. How we have uh, operationalized, operationalized these memos into our study. We have created observational notes. Observational notes, for example, that uh, are um, detailed description on what you see on the video, hair, feel in the interview. Apart from the words, remember we had a video, and in this video, the first thing we did was to transcribe the, all the words they say. Now it's time to come back to that video and to analyze other kinds of elements like bone stone, uh, body expression, and all this kind of information that could be important uh, in terms of uh, enriching the information that comes from the uh, words, from the discourse. Imagine we have, we can have a sentence that is like, well, this could be an example. Um, the, the service provided by the restaurant was, was very good. If this is the tone and this is expression, it doesn't seem that the individual is very uh, happy with the service. But instead, if the individual says the service of the, of the restaurant was very good, was it very good? So you, we can see that this, this is not the same. So what kind of, so now it's time when observational, when we, when it can, we arrive to observational nodes, methodological nodes, theoretical nodes, it's time to create or to enrich the code book you, cre you cre created at the, in, in this practice. For example, in this case, we can have some families of memos. Families of memos, here we have the, fam the name of the family is visual aspects and the second family is vocal aspects. And in visual aspect, we include like uh, observational note, not with the head. Uh, this goes, this goes. Uh, distraction, doubt, denies with the head and so on. Disconnection, connection and so on. Smile, this is, these are examples of visual aspects. Vocal aspects, silence, doubt, it seems he's not very comfortable or very uh, that doesn't agree very very much and so on. So it's time to um, create or to work on your code book of memes. Here we, we have an example. For example, uh, this is a summary of the different memos. We have uh, observational notes, theoretical notes, and personal notes, and depending on the different the primary documents. Primary document one is a man of 18 years old. So you, you have the summary. This is you, what you can include in your, uh, in your final report. And you can do the same for the rest of the primary documents. And, and at the end, we have the total. And this is another example. This is a good example because it's more specific than this. In this one, we only have the number of observational notes. As you see, 18, four, but in the second table that we are going to see, what we have is each of the interview. And this is the name of the individual interview. This is what happened, the memo. Be nice, not, look, at, look up, silence. We have the minute where, where, where this appears. And this is the explanation of the visual aspect or the vocal aspect. As you see, this is another important thing you have to do for each of the uh, in-depth interviews. You need to create a table like this. Of course, maybe you have less observational loads and theoretical loads. That's not a problem. If you have five, seven, ten, it's a good number. Okay? Uh, and here we have another example. Minute, reaction, observation. The same for the focus groups. Another practice where we can include some, um, some connotational elements is in the practice, practice number two, when we were identifying the experience generated from a sensory 
or a feeling point of view. So maybe when the individual is uh, giving their opinion regarding the space environment, the staff, the processes, the survey delivery, or the physical evidences where the service take, take place, maybe there are non-verbal uh, elements that are important, like smiling, shouting, be, being nervous, doubting, or even uh, mm, uh, making a long silence. That is a kind of doubting element. So you can reach also the practice number three with non um, with a non uh, verbal elements or connotational elements. As we see, this is an example that you can see in the slide. You can stop. So they say spaces, a space environment. Okay, in the in interview primary document number four, this is what happened. Observational note: the individual tells it with emotion. Personal, in focus group, whatever, is an example. Uh, an individual says something about the people that was cleaning the room. Observational note, the individual was angry, and so on. So you can explain the situation, an example, and also what is the observational note you have used to code that connotational element. So this is an example. And another, the last element that is important when we are dealing with focus groups or, or on the in-depth interview is the timing. This timing allows to understand uh, what are the different blocks of the, um, of the uh, session. As you see, first block, presentation of the focus group from the beginning to minute 15. Second block, presentation of participants from 15 to 18. Third block, exposition of processes, presentation of product, whatever, all the different elements that you have, all the division of the elements that have appeared in the, uh, in the focus group script. Let's go to see an example uh, of Oceanographic Valencia that is a, a teamwork assessment that we did last year. In this case, case this is the timing uh, for the interview of the man of 18 years old. Of course, you need to do one of these for each of the interviews and also for the, uh, in the interview. The first block, the 41st seconds is the presentation, warming up questions, the second block, third block, reasons to visit oceanographic then thematic park, fourth block, conformity with the services delivered, fifth block, satisfaction with the oceanographic park, last block, six, six, uh, sixth block, classification questions, uh, last block, thank you and uh, goodbye. So this is an example. Here you have two more examples, one from the focus group and another one from the an in the interview uh, for from the study from dream series from short camp. If you want to see this more in detail, you can stop the video and you can have a look more in detail of the different elements and how do I, how do they identify the minute where the thing where the block changes. Uh, and, the, and the, the last element that is not very common in qualitative studies, but it can be done. Uh, the, the, the individuals, the, the, the interviewer, can also incorporate uh, an external element, could be incorporated to analyze the reaction of the individual. So we can uh, include in the interview and include in the focus group some information that we think that it could be important, maybe it's true or not, it's not necessary, that is true, at least it's information, and we can analyze the information. For instance, we can explain the example or the case of an individual that went to a restaurant and there, for example, the food was rotten, was in bad conditions. And we can explain the situation and we can ask them how they would react if they were the individual. So this is the idea of incorporation uh, of uh, external uh, provocations. Okay, here you can see the, the, the elements that could be used, we can analyze body language, physical reaction, 
identity element, and semiotic language. Semiotic elements are metaphors and discursive analysis, that this is more sociologic, uh, it's more advanced topics. We are not going to focus on this, and, uh, but uh, I included in the slide because I want you to know that these are uh, often used, okay? And for um, how would we include this? Uh, how would we include this uh, connotational information, for example, in our network analysis, well, in our network? For instance, if we have two concepts like responsibility and awareness, and maybe when we were watching the videos, we have re uh, realized that between the, in the real re re in the relationship between these two concepts. The, the, there is a contradiction and uh, the reaction is rage and that the individual uh, is angry and rage uh, arises when they, uh, when we uh, speak about this topic. So we can color this and we can put a comment. In this case, for example, action and sports, we can say, we can color it and say, in the interview, they, in, uh, they show their happiness to link uh, natural leisure with active leisure. This is another way. And the last example is gastronomy, veggies and fresh food. This is an, a discursive analysis. That means that when the individuals talk about uh, veggie food, they, they always include the idea of fresh food. These are three examples. We can see more examples. For instance, homocenographic, they have their networks and they have including colors some element and put some comment. In this case, I don't know if we can read it, or maybe we can. Let's see if I can move the slide this way. And they say, Uno, one of the most important motives of the visit is related to have been uh, received previous uh, recommendations. And in the other one, they include, for example, when we are talking about the, the staff, in general, the staff are very happy and uh, uh, close to the classes. These are examples. Let's see the next one. In this case, they have put all the concepts together. Maybe, you, you know, I really don't like this uh, very too large uh, network graphs. I would prefer to create two or three different ones, including all the different levels. Remember, you need to include one for each of the levels, you need to include at least one that includes the information and cost of, the, of the customer journey map, one including the uh, experience generator, and one at least including the, the levels of relationship between, between the company and the uh, customer that are transactional, relational, and experiential. In this case, when they talk about these core elements, it seems there is a, a general interest. When they talk about the pool, they think that is, or they, they, they affirm that it's uh, is nice, but it's very small. They, with the aesthetics, in this case of the Dream Suite sort of calm, they say, they, 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 they say that it's precious. So they extract this information, not by analyzing the words, but analyzing the, uh, the attitude, the um, way the individual had uh, said, the tone of the voice, the um, intonation, the uh, movement of the hand, eyes, or even the body position. So I hope you have I understood this practice, and now we are going to see what uh, is supposed. Uh, what, what do you have to do regarding this practice? Uh, in this case, first of all, you need to think about the non-textual aspect in each of the elements of the uh, uh, hermeneutic unit. So that is visual aspects and vocal aspects. Okay, you need to see, to watch again the videos and to identify the elements. Once uh, at the same time you do this, you need to register the, 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 the relevant uh, connotative communication elements of each of the elements, of, of, of each of the, the primary documents individually. So you need to use the memos uh, and observational notes. In this case, it's important that you create a family of memos, new memos, if they are necessary. 
This is what is necessary in say, um, in point number three. Create a code book or, or notebook. So you need to have the same code book or notebook for memos as well. And at the end of this, so you need to create this first of all, summarizing. You need to create for each of the different uh, primary document, the timing. Watch the video again and create one timing for each of the different primary documents, for the part in the interviews and for the focus groups. Second one, you need to create a table like this, including the different memos or the different observational notes, the meaning and what is going on. And at the end, when you have done this for each of the different um, for each of the different primary document, you need to create a table like this, like this summarize. Remember, to do this, you need to create, first of all, a, family, a, ta a table of memos with two families, for example, like this visual and vocal and different examples. And finally, identify also some connotative elements related to the customer experience generator. What is this? This table. You need to create a table like this. Experience generator, all the different experience generator, the example, and uh, from the two levels, sensory and feeling. Space, environment, staff, processes with examples. Specifying where in the different primary documents is and how have you, uh, what, how we, what, what is the memo you have used to identify. And finally, you need to include also this information, for example, in the network graph. You need to see where, similar to this example, could you include connotative information in your network graph. So this is what you have to do for this week. We have done this class Monday, the 2nd of May, 2022. You have one week until Monday, 9th of May, 2022. I hope you, you have enjoyed the class and we are very close to finish the semester and the analysis, the qualitative uh, marketing research analysis. Thank you very much for watching the video.